hide in your story. You know the Bible, there are true stories. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. The stories he wrote of things happened that is involved in. There were things that attempted to abort the stories halfway. But they didn't this stuff. God continued to go to the end. Continued to Moses got to the point where he got to the end. And God said, Yeah, I'm with you here yeah, right now. So it's not a halfway. Even those that would not know how their end was, he says, Enoch walked with God, isn't it? And he was not found because he was found. He pleased the Lord. Because he walked in faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Then it says in verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. But whoever cometh to God must believe that he is, and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, so we see now we continue with that. Say, my story is still, is still on. Say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people around you might think it's over. You know that? Oh, they said for David in Psalm 3. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's no help for him in God. That means it's even God cannot help him. <laughs> it's finished. In 2 Kings, the man said, if God were to open the windows of heaven, this can't even be settled. It can't be restored anymore. It's finished. <laughs> that was just the beginning of the story. <laughs> he that began the good work in us will what? Complete it. Jeremiah 29 and 11. We're going to read from verse 1 later, but let's read 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. When God gave me this message, I didn't go to this, like this test, the last time with this test, and then preach a message. Just excuse me, and I begin, all right. Then I went to this verse, and I just couldn't leave it. So it's centered around it. Now we see different types in, 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 in the, it also says, God, we are inscribed in the palm of his hands. So it's not like we are forgotten. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. I'm just like to see God's plan and purpose. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Notice. How it's supposed to be fruitful and multiply and replenish. He didn't just create and live. With a purpose, a plan. That's why it says, let us make man. A deliberate plan. It wasn't just rush, rush, one thing he just thought about. He said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Dominion. So we're supposed to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. So to be fruitful means continue to be productive. Multiply. Replenish, fill up the earth. So from one problem, you continue to, to re reproduce itself. So I have dominion authority. So it's a plan and purpose. That we'll see in Romans chapter 8. Romans. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. If you're there, say amen. I heard one amen. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. His purpose. For whom he did for know. He also did predestinate 
to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren firstborn among many us now we're supposed to be conformed to that image of that son so it's progressive everything in God everything we walk through is to shape us to be like him everything the process to our desires the process to achieving things or to walking dreams or whatever brings us to that verse 30 moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified so we see stories of different people we're going to see examples i will go as to we can and you know to the extent i know it's going to continue next week we see different examples of joseph moses david abraham paul jesus himself we talk about the story continuing so it's not over every one of them we have had instances where you think that the story was finished i can just go through but we'll get to the details later moses when he when he was being pursued <laughs> oh, when he went that time after he he killed the egyptian you know he would have thought he was he was it was over for him, isn't it? He left the throne. They were like, man, that's what this guy is done for. <laughs> he left the big thing he was. That throne was too small compared to the mandate of God. When Joseph was thrown into the pit, at that point, you would think it's over, isn't it? They would have come and kill animals would have eaten him. A little rattlesnake from the desert would have just finished him right there. <laughs> But it wasn't over. From the pit of prison. From the prison. From the pit of Potiphar's house to prison, prison to the palace. But we'll get to that. But at each stage, you think it's over. That's how the song says, From the grave. They say, From the, from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the Lord, I live to you every point felt like it was over even for the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> praise God <laughs> glory to God hallelujah hallelujah so we see these examples in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 that's our life 2nd Corinthians in chapter 5 now I go sometimes I spend time like this on a Sunday and Wednesday going into details but um on Sunday now, I'm going into that. I'm not usually... <laughs> I usually rush, you know, praise God. And I usually go through. But, well, let's take it. Somebody following me? Yeah. Okay, good. Amen. And he wants us to see this. The story's not over. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't give up at all. <laughs> it's just beginning. Man, last time I was saying that, I was telling you about this morning. I said, I was saying, last time I mentioned in the service, I said, a poet started writing his first po po uh, po uh, poem at 88. The man that established Mayo Clinic at 72. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, one would have thought that was over. But why will he be? Abraham 100. Hmm? Praise God. So don't let time dictate your destiny. He has given you dominion over all the works of his hands, including time, because time is regulated by the movement of the earth. Is somebody hearing me? So the sun moves so and so and all that. And it settles. When the sun and the moon stayed in place in time of Joshua, you know it altered the time. It's scientifically proven. So why can't you alter your own? <laughs> yeah. Alter your own. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We can't change anything. 
See, things can change because of you. I've given you different instances. The whole of Staten Island Expressway, I told you how they constructed it. Used to take our daughter every morning to Manhattan. Then there was there was traffic to school back and forth. And in the morning, they would say, oh, there is no, uh, they would say there's no traffic. It's holding back. I said, now, God, do something so it can be easy. They constructed the road and put an HOV. HOV used to be, it's supposed to be three people. They did it for two because we were two. Now you are waiting for the whole universe to agree with you. That's your business. <laughs> I'm taking what, that's why they take what's yours. Amen. And I took it. When you, you finished from the high school, they changed it to three people. Who cares? <laughs> I covered that with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. Is somebody hearing me? Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. It says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, is a new creature. You didn't hear me. I said he's a new creature. Amen. There is no one like you. Amen. No similarity. Not even twins. <laughs> there is nothing that can say I look like him or I can make him change when he didn't make me in the first place. If any man be in who? Did he say in the nation? Did he say in the political party? Did he say in where you walk? Did he say even in your parents? If any man be in Christ Jesus. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are passed away. No, not new. New. And in this new, he said, raise me up from the merry clay, put me on a rock, and establishes my going. In this new thing we're going, we're moving. If any man be in Christ, that's right. In First Peter 2.2, 2, you might not be able to open it until we open to all of the world. <laughs> I mean, if you know the scripture, it says, as newborn babes. You know, some people say, I've been a Christian, I got born. I've been a Christian since my mother had me. No, 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 no. You are a baby the moment you gave your life to Christ. A baby in the Lord. You begin to grow in Him. Are you hearing me? So that it is not a thing of your mixing up your secular babe. Uh, foundational secular status when you are in, when you become born again you submit yourself to the tenets of the scripture somebody hearing me so there are foundation classes there are things you go through so pride will make you think well you know i don't even know <laughs> whether i need that you know i wait i've been a professor in this and this or i know so and so you might even have had a phd in bible knowledge if you got born again today you go through it because you are a new person now are you hearing me? You see, as newborn babes, like a little child, a toddler, a baby, newborn, you desire the sincere milk of the world so you might grow thereby. Now, if we are growing that way, so where we are before, it's not where we want to be. We want to continue what? Keep growing. Everyone say grow. So as I grow, like you say, metamorphosis, like we say, poop, egg, lava, pupa, butterfly. So we're gro gradually going from stage to stage. First Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I mean, verse 18. He said, we are with open face. So behold him as in a glass. We are transformed into the same image we behold from what? Glory to glory. So there is no, there is no one place in Christianity. Hello, hear me? Amen. You know, I, you know, we, we, we used to pray in tongues five years ago. What are you praying now? <laughs> no, you got okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing like, I was there and I just stopped. No, no, no. If you're not going for it, you're going backwards. Oh, there's nothing. No, no offense. That's the way it is. We, come, we, come, we, we deal with the system of the world. Cast an imagination. So you need the world. You need to be on fire consistently. See, see, it's not that church attendance. It's using the instruments of what God has given you to forge ahead, to get your victory. Somebody hearing me? Yeah! So, you're not going somewhere. They say, we're 20 of us going for this interview. They need to. They just go, I'm a Christian, and just keep going. No, no, you declare immediately, the favor of God is working for me. <laughs> I am the head, I know the tail. You, you declare what you want and take it. <laughs> you are not using your godly authority. 
Why did he say, now I give you the keys of the kingdom? Jesus prayed. Have heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven, how do I be thy name? That we, <laughs> thy kingdom come. Isn't it? How? That we be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I give you the keys of the, that kingdom, now how to tap into that kingdom. Whatsoever you bind or disallow, it is allowed. I won't just play around and make Christian. Sickness comes, I bind you, I disallow you. Something comes against your children, I disallow you because children are the heritage of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord, it makes it rich only and no sorrows added. Nobody like you has ever taken this. Says who? Be practical about your destiny. When you land at an airport, anywhere you're going, step in and say, I have stepped on the treadmill on this place. I possess what is mine. Take it practically and go and watch and say things begin to happen to you. Don't analyze how the airport is. Even the airline didn't treat you well. Praise God in everything, give him thanks. And move on because the enemy intends to use that distraction to make you not take what belongs to you. The kingdom of heaven suffered violent. The violent take any word by force. <laughs> when you're saying no, I'm saying yes. Praise God. So you can reverse what has started negatively. It turns out to honor you briefly. That's somebody's portion here right now. They will celebrate you on that job. I said they will celebrate you in that job. They will celebrate you. I said they will celebrate you. You are an asset. <laughs> I said you are an asset. Amen. When you are not there, they are wondering why, why didn't she come? Why didn't he come? Come on. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, your presence brings them rest because you carry God. Somebody say, That's my portion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, wonderful Jesus. We praise you, mighty God. Praise you, mighty God. We praise. We just read in Romans. Now, in 1 Peter 2 5. He said, as live, we as live in stones. And friends, he said, we are being built up. So it doesn't my feet, the prince of God, all over my feet. Glory to God. Verse 5, 1 Peter chapter 2. Where am I going to James? <laughs> Verse 5. He said, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. And holy priesthood to offer our spiritual praises acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. To offer our spiritual praises. Now, you know that's the purpose of God. We'll get to that even on Wednesday teaches. Offer our spiritual praises. That's the purpose of God for our salvation. You know, to glory to God. So we are built up a spiritual house. So we're being built up, built up. So so see the story has not ended. When there is there are issues going on, it makes you know the story is on. Because the process is on. Check the Bible records. Look at their stories. We saw in Romans chapter 8 in verse 29. You can open on to it so I can break down a little bit some of the things. Sometimes when I want to rush, I can't get to rush. So I have to get some of this things down. But it's good. So when a place where we, as, as God brings his, releases his power, he gives us revelation of prophetic teachings that helps us do everyday practical things. Praise God. So we are not a denial. We are not like people out there who don't know the Lord. We know the Lord. Our case is different. Moses says, if you don't go with us, I will be different from the other people then. <laughs> yeah, his presence makes us, makes it, gives us the difference. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Lift your hand and wave unto the Lord. Is somebody still excited? I'm expectant. Glory to God. Your this week must be better than every week you have experienced before. I say your this week must be better than every week you have experienced before. Your this week must be better than every week you have experienced before. Your this week must be better than every week you have experienced before. Your this week, this week, this week, this week, this week must be better than every other week you have experienced in your time past. In, in, in the name of Jesus, God cannot lie. <laughs> So get your package because I see some deliveries coming for somebody. Deliveries, deliveries, deliveries. Romans chapter 8. Now, we we'll see in verse 29 it says, For whom he did for no. For no means no beforehand, you and I. So it's a plan. He didn't just drop us there in salvation and just go anyhow. No, it's pre planned. He also did predestinate which is to determine before 
ordained that we should be like, we have been appointed and prepared for such a time as this. Who can stop it then? Lamentation 3.37 says, who is it that has said it and it comes to pass? If God has not ordained it, it's only what God says that comes to pass. <laughs> As I said, I feel the presence of God over me. What, has they, what have they said concerning you? What are you afraid is being said? Or what are you afraid is being done? If God has no hand, if he cannot stand, they shall surely gather together. It says, not by me, says the Lord. Anyone that rises up against you, what? Falls for your sake. Say it again, I will live well and not die. I will live well and not die. Jesus' name. Now it says, predestinate to be conformed. To be conformed means jointly formed. Like co-formed. Fashioned like unto... To be like, conformed unto the likeness, as the image. Conformed to be like, fashion to be like. That's God's goal, to be like Jesus. That's why it says, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. So Jesus is the firstborn. Every other person looks like him. We are from the same parents, so to speak. <laughs> are you hearing me? And so, so we look like him. Say, so, like siblings, say so look alike, isn't it? So, so we look like him. So he's, he looks like God. He's the express. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us. Brightness. Image of God. And the Bible says we are being shaped to be like him. Isn't that wonderful? Why? This just goes back to Genesis chapter 1. Let us make man what? In our image. See, God didn't give up after Genesis 3. Jesus came to bring us back to that order. So that's the process to work in. Everything. When he says in verse 28, and we know that all things will work together, work together for good to the world because and now for all things work together. All things that relate to us, they purpose. He's just bringing us to line up to be like Jesus. Everything. But are you yielding to that? You got to know to yield to it. You see, in the things of God, it casts to its, its That's why it says faith. It doesn't work like we feel. Are you getting me? Ah. Uh, says pray. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I'm really in a hurry. And the um, says, why don't you spend two minutes and just say hi to that person? God, you know, I just have to resume at 10. <laughs> Who gave you the job in the first place? What you're on the way and there's traffic. Maybe you go by a bus. Especially when you're not the one driving. Are you going to take the steering from the bus driver and say, come, let me do this? <laughs> or you're in a boat. Or in the train. Maybe you become the train engineer now. <laughs> Can, there are certain things you cannot change. Are you hearing me? Except God does the change. What if it gets to that point? So when he tells you right where you are to say, do this. Don't analyze some of the things look like it might look ordinary. That's the place of faith. It says Enoch walk with God. You can walk with God. So like I said, faith is a lifestyle, but let's say it here. The judge shall live by faith. Not just because we claim something. We live accordingly. Where it looks so hard, we just say, God, I rest in you. Last Sunday we came here, we to start this. He said, tell them to give me thanks in all things. <laughs> in that verse, you are going to give him thanks. That's a big breakthrough to bring yourself to. That's why he gave a teaching to align us to know how to understand that. If I can do that, thank you. The fire is burning, thank you, Lord. Oh, everybody around you might look like you're foolish. Thank you, Lord. Because <laughs> they will not understand you. You're so tired. Thank you, Lord. Especially if you find yourself just in the midst of the whole thing, you'll be smiling. Because you're thanking God. Faith. Say, so rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In all things, give Him thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. See the flow? Praise God. 
who is the first one to conform to the image of his son. That is his purpose. Now, go back to Jeremiah 29. Tell somebody God loves you this morning. Guys, bring in this. He said, the thoughts that I have towards you, they are not, so they, are, they, they are thoughts of peace, not of evil, that, to give you an expected end now. Notice the first sentence, the first line says, for I know. It's not an accidental thought. I know. <laughs> Tell somebody he knows. He knows. <laughs> it's not rush, rush. It's not rush, rush. I know. Which means it is deliberate. Somebody hear me? In place, planned. If I say, I am going to do this, or I tell you, I know what I'm going to do concerning that thing, because I already know, I already have it in place. It's planned already. I'm not going to, I say, I'll think about you, see what we can do. It's different from, I know what we'll do. This is it's already in place. We'll see, we'll do that. God says, I know. Tell somebody again, He knows. Now the thoughts, the imaginations, the plots, the plans, the purpose, the device, his intentions, the thoughts that I have towards you, they are things that are intentional. That I think, the original language says, to devise, to invent, purpose, to calculate it for me, intended to shape my destiny. That's what I put there. So it means, like an architect, you know, he's a master architect. I always say that he, he, he designs everything. He has designed, and he continues to design, and he's working it out. He's the architect and the engineer and the builder. So he's working it out for us. So it means God's schemes, and the notes on that, his plans, his purpose, we are an invention, <laughs> so to speak. So the things are there. So it's not just going to be. So now, if you have a design for a building that's already in place. You are building the building. The architect is watching it. The engineer, they are working on it. Suddenly, somebody comes and says, overnight, he wants to cause harm. He goes there and bulldozes one part down or pours some fire, something to burn the place down. Does that change the plan? The master plan is still this. The paper is there. The engineer, the architect has it. He drew it. It doesn't change nothing. It might delay a little bit. It might even bring out a better plan because right now it becomes more fortified. Yes, sir. Tell somebody again. The story continues. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. So it does not change the plan. The architect has, has drawn it. He's designed it. He's working on it. So no matter what, the devil comes overnight to try to do. It does not change nothing. The master plan is still intact. Let us make man in our image. All the goodies around it help us to walk in that direction. The goal is still intact. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So if it's intended to change our destiny, who can change it? Isaiah 14, 27. He said God purposes who can disannul it. <laughs> yeah, that's a master architect. Who can change it? Nobody. I don't care what they pour or burn overnight or what they do. It mm, doesn't change nothing. It's intact. Say it again. I'm intact. I'm intact. Who can disarm? To disarm means to violate or break it. Who can frustrate it? Who can cause it to cease? Nobody. So, in the midst of plenty, you smile. In the midst of small, you smile. When it's happening immediately, you smile. 
When there's a delay, you smile. Because none of those things change what God's original intent is. So we're not just happy, sad, happy. No, no. The joy of knowing God is the master architect. Kiss me. Gives me sustained joy. Oh, the pain might come on the outside. That's why Paul said, though the outward man perish. The inward man is renewed day by day. I will never give up. Say, say I will never give up. <laughs> the devil has no answer for you. Did you hear me? Or you might think you failed. No, no, no. Or you think there's something to fail. No, 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 no. He has no. If he had answers for you, you won't be here to see Capodia. Come on. Say it again. He has no answer for me. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So see that thoughts of your heart of evil to give you an explanation. And notice it says, I think towards you. It's not a bunch. You as a person. The designs are unique. If any man being Christ Jesus is a new creature. Uniquely you. You know, some people say, I'm going to spend time to find find my real me. And so they go spend some time, they identify themselves and centers around things around them. I say, well, you are finding out things. You've not even found out nothing about you if you don't find it out in God. Therapy is good. We don't, we, uh, that's not bad. But if it's only therapy, there's a likelihood to be relapses. Or there's a likelihood to be relapses. But there are, there's, a, there's, a, there's a heavenly therapy. You can do. You can, you can work with the heavenly therapy. Somebody who believes God can do every other thing they do. Secondly, of course, therapy it helps you to focus on what to take you away from the things you're doing. Part of therapy is that you're not going to, like I say all the time, you're not going to say, I, I'm, I'm getting free from from what is holding me bondage, whether it's smoking or drinking, and you're passing by the bar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to keep yourself away. That's why they go away for a while. So you break the influence we have over you. I told you the story of a lady who said anytime she drives, enters a car, the smell of a car, you know, new car, and the smell of a car makes her want to smoke. So she stopped driving for six months. She was a highly placed person, a medical practitioner. Stopped driving for six months. Can you imagine that kind of person running all over the street, jumping from bus to bus? <laughs> stopped driving for six months in order to help her get into, get up. So there's nothing wrong with that. That's wisdom. Are you getting it? Praise God. Praise God. But God is one that gives her the, the ultimate. He said, to give you an expected end. Expectation means things that I long for. So don't let that slip. I said expectation, we'll get into that later as we go. It's the basis for living. I've been saying it in different messages. Without expectation, there's no living. We even saw it on Wednesday. That's why that's part of the way you are expected. It keeps you alive. It's part of your protection from harm. I look forward to God doing things every day. You wake up, something good is in store for me. I don't. It's not. See, when you wake up, you don't have an expectation. You are analyzing your present today based on the things that happened yesterday. So one will be expecting the same results of yesterday today. Hello. So even if the whole world was against you yesterday. So, this is the day that the Lord has made something new in store for me. You're looking, you may, I'm a shanty more cordia. You're expecting testimonies for yourself from all your loved ones. Somebody's going to call you if something's happened. I expect testimonies every day from members of the church. I'm looking for that things are happening in their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. That things are happening. That's what I'm expecting. I don't wake up thinking it's the same thing yesterday. No, 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 no. no. That's what you guys know. It's all, I tell you guys testimony every day. I was saying them on Wednesday. I went to pick up a pack. I can't remember that story. Now, the address on my ID card is the home one. My ID. So I couldn't have picked up. But on the address on the pack, it says here. And I will say, put a hole so I can pick it up. But you have to have the same address and the name. And on the package, usually sometimes when they send things to the church, if I have to pick them, I say they put the name of the church and my name. If I have to. Then they put uh, the, the alternate number or trust the number's phone number. Now, get, guess what? So when I lost a go today on my way to church on Wednesday, they said, go today. My mind says, tomorrow, you know, there's no service. When first day, we can do all this thing <laughs> inside me. It's a like, good today. So I went. The man just took my ID card. Mm -hmm. Took it around the box. Yeah. And just gave me the bus and I went. I got into the car, looked at the box. There was nothing on my ID that was on the box. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. Now, somebody says, oh, the Lord is making you do something. No, it wasn't wrong. The package belonged to us. It's just that he was avoiding the longer process. 
because I wouldn't and they were shipping by ship into the home address and all that stuff. So and in that I looked at it, I said, Well, the number that was even there was our own phone number. And even if the number was there, the number is not reflected on your ID. So there was nothing to show anything but I said and the Lord just said, That's the miracle. <laughs> It just reminded me of the lady who went to the embassy. I told you guys years back. This is just two days ago. Now that house was years back, or three days ago. I years back went to the embassy and not said pray with her. And don't go with her. Don't take the package they were supposed to give you. That would have put her in trouble. And she went to the embassy, how God orchestrated, did all the things. When she got in there, they were calling, oh, Dr. Somebody, and she's not a doctor. She's going to be that fiance who is a doctor. She went to us, and the Lord said, she came out. They gave her the uh, visas, everything. See, the Lord made them to see something that was not there that will enhance our getting it. When is a miracle? A miracle means, I'm going to share something soon. Man, that, a miracle means it's not normal. It's not ordinary. Why are you waiting for the normal? This is so hard, it cannot be done. Then that's when you need a miracle. <laughs> Hello? If your income cannot make it, then you need a miracle. If the diagnosis says it's too late, then you need a miracle. If they say, we can't take anybody again in employment, then you need a miracle. They say, this company cannot promote anymore, the budget is not big enough, then you need a miracle. Somebody has left a key in the trunk of a car and sat in the front there and declared. He was here. He said, I got the faith in you. Not so sweet. He said, he said, I stood there. I said, God, nothing is impossible with you. They stayed there. By 10 minutes, the trunk on his own popped open. Boom. <laughs> and they picked up the car and drove away. Picked up the car and drove away. With God, all things are what? Possible. That's why it's the miracle working power of God. That's where God comes. He takes all the glory. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. I know my time is good. But let's keep going. He said, now notice this. The thought that I think. Not the one I thought before. Not the one I will think. I am thinking it now. <laughs> so God is current with your issues. He said, it's the very present help. Psalm 46 verse 1. The very present. Oh, you didn't hear me. The Bible does not waste words. It didn't say the present, the very. In the real, right now, right now. How you need it, why you need it, how, what magnitude of help you need, the size, the quality, anything, anywhere you need it. The very present help. Which means your situations cannot surprise God, they can't go beyond God. They can't be bigger than God. They can't embarrass God. They can't do anything against God. God can do anything. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Now, now I said, say the thoughts that I am thinking right now, I will always think because every right now, every moment is right now. Always, or you're always on God's mind, always on His agenda. The Lord says, I am planning. Working out things, appointing you, positioning you, and people for you, moving on the hearts of men and women for you. Somebody hearing me? Changing laws and decrees of various nations, states, cities, towns, organizations, and others for you. It's changing things right now. <laughs> Somebody didn't hear me. <laughs> Why? You said you believe God for paper. They told me your name is not in the system. Not only did it come in the system, they honored me at the end. Are you hearing me? Rushing and trying to change it. That's what they say. When they say it's impossible, the miracle working power of God comes in. You are a child of God. You belong to God. Is somebody hearing me? Hey. We and God, the dynamo, Santa Pacaria, nothing can change that. Woo! Hey, he said, God is able. He's doing now. Exceeding abundantly, Ephesians 3.20. 20, above all you can think or ask, according to his power that walketh in us. 
is knowledge of what you know now. And God is able, he's doing, to do exceeding. God is able to make all grace also, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, chapter 9, verse 8, abound towards you. All grace, in that you having all sufficiency in all things, abound unto every good work. The story continues. <laughs> I'm going to I don't want to rush this. Is somebody getting something? So I'm, I'm going to have to continue later. Let's rise on our feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to continue that Jeremiah to now. We're going to go on from there. He has not say he has not finished with me yet. <laughs> He's still writing my story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Just begin to bless God. Begin to bless God. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Begin to bless God. Thank Him. Thank Him. And honor Him and worship Him. Glory to God. We praise you, mighty God. Oh, we're going to get into that and get to Jeremiah from the verse 1. That's what you have as well. And you're going to see. Glory to God. We praise you. Just bless Him. Bless Him. Bless Him. Consciously. Consciously bless Him. You see, when we say let's stand up and thank God, it's not a routine of the service has almost finished. The message is finished. No, we are deliberately grateful. Have you, are you being blessed by what you're hearing? Then be grateful to God. Then tap into this anointing of what he's saying right now. He says the story has not ended. <laughs> it's a beautiful week for somebody coming. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. Ah, I see you. I see you dancing. I see this, I see you dance. Yes, this week. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So this is my week, truly, yeah. Because I see, I see, I see you dance. I saw it. So take it, take it. So the dancing is not only here. When you enter your class, it was a dance. Let people arise, what's wrong with that? <laughs> when you get home, you dance. Then on your job, as you want to go, you just give it a little. Yeah, yeah. Why are you at work, guys? Yeah, the restroom at work just dance. Just dance throughout the day. Just celebrate. Hallelujah. The songwriter says you are all I need. <laughs> 